Howdy, folks, Bye. and welcome Bye. to another buckle show. Yes, I won this buckle. This is a reigning buckle. Doesn't mean of reigning, and it doesn't mean I'm like a king. It just means horse reigning, which is cow work, but nobody really cares. Anyways, it's a nice buckle, though, and it holds my pants up. So thank you very much. I and care. Rob, I was there when you got it. You pant me with uh, Gig Gidge was there. Excuse me. And um, welcome to show 23. This is going to be called the wide world of sports or sports or sports and we're good sports so are we maybe not anyways let's get right into the do our uh, thing are you ready i don't know the words they're right here oh, she's only done it 23 times no, times two I which is 46 thousands of songs but not this one you ready <clears throat> this thing hanging from my ear i've been gotten i've gotten so many questions about I know, it's it fun, just lately I, too it's i know hilarious. and it's like only told everybody what it is um <laughs> you wear an earring man <laughs> dig dig Did folks you, here's your ear man and can you see it it is toilet paper right it's a toilet paper earring we make toilet paper earrings we have them for charms for for bracelets and we have them as guitar ornaments because we know we make messes when we play and they're good for cleaning things up. We also have them in a paper towel size. Paper towel. Paper towel. <laughs> paper towel. And then, and the great thing about this stuff is like, let's face it, when the shit hit the fan, <laughs> well, you know what I mean, uh, with the whole There's thing with the, with, <laughs> with the pandemic, glorademic, goddamn mandemic, what are we all got? We, everybody bought paper towels and toilet paper. So we figured these are important objects. So dear to someone's heart. So we make these ornaments and they were selling out. You'll notice that once I wasn't wearing it, and that's because the entire stock was sold out and we rushed we to, to make, make money more. somehow. Because Lord knows so, we ain't cause, cause we ain't begging for money There's here. Not this a is, lot of gigs. This There's is not, not no one gigs, of those Venmo, so. PayPal no, we're, things. We're not you know, this is actually to say, just, just hey, it. you know, Facebook dumps paper. us a lot yeah. and we freeze and we and fart. And we, he farts, the I, whole show is I'm always still... up on the Bruce Foreman YouTube channel. And that's what that says. So go there and binge away. You can catch up on the lost episodes. And also there's some other stuff, some bebop poetry and cowbop music. Ooh, now we're talking. And so, uh, but let's. We've got what? We got sports gidget. We got bowling gidget tonight. That's right, because I'm a bowling princess. You kind of, I mean, I'm getting like almost like not just bowling, but Laverne oh, Shirley. Oh, a vintage. Kind of okay, check check this out. Woo! Can you see it? This is Ed Finn's cocktail lounge. Ed Finn's cocktail lounge. Yeah, baby. Woo! You guys, that, you, you, that's my league. You bring your balls. That's my league. Oh yeah. Oh, you're, you're never without your balls. I forgot. I got a ball. Oh, a ball. I got, I got my ball, my bowling ball. You want to show everybody your bowling ball? I love my bowling ball so stinking much because I bought this when I was 18. Wow. I did. And I, and I, you know, I had to buy it because, because <laughs> I was bowling with my boyfriend, my old boyfriend. It wasn't him. It was a long time ago. And I was so tiny and so little and so I was like this big around, and even the little lady balls that they had at the bowling alley. They could be dangerous, believe me. Lady I know that sounds strange, lady balls, but the little lady balls were too heavy. I couldn't pick them up. So I had to buy my own ball. So I bought my own ball, and I still have it. It's got my name imprinted on it, and I still have it. It's, it's my little lady ball, and my cute little case, and it's got my old address. I can't tell you how. Look, look, this is my old address. I was living at home. This is like. Parents' house in Willow Glen in San I can't, Jose. I can't tell 
tell you, I can't tell you how much knowing her skill with throwing projectiles. This is the only how much it terrorizes me to have my guitar in the same room as that know, thing, which bowl. weighs enough to like crunch my oh, balls this is and the guitar. It's such. It's like the. It's the lightest it weight bowling ball ever made. Anyways. And I remember where I bought it. I got it at the Jimco. The Jimco in San Jose. They made it for me. They had like a bowling department. <laughs> this was 1970. Well, speaking of which, oh and I'm God. gonna I'm gonna rant a bench oh a bench today. A bench a bunch of... That was me, Ruby. I was banging the bowling ball. There she goes. Time for a sanity. Yeah, I need a sanity yeah. really bad. And we just got a great comment. I just read Network TV needs a legendary jazz player and his wife doing a variety yeah, show. And I think cocktail. you guys are it. And you know. We are on HBO now. I don't know if y'all know this hillbilly box office, but they're getting, they're kind of fledgling. I mean, hence the dog barking in the background. And so uh, we're we're also still on my YouTube channel and here, and it looks like things are going great. I don't know if me, me threatening Mark Zuckerberg with that paternity suit that he was so afraid of made any difference, but let's hope it worked. Um, I'm going to play a little bit because I can Yeah, 
you some round sound sanitini, folks. Doesn't that just make y'all thirsty? Yeah, oh, we lost the feed. It says zero. Oh, no, it says audio zero. Okay, cool. I don't know exactly how all this works, but now it's back. We got people saying shit. They I'm shit? sure they're probably thinking. They say shit about me. No, I think they're they're they're, they're like complaining about my playing. How come I'm playing so much? <clears throat> you know. Uh, what do you think, Gidge? You know that song? Oh, I know that song. Happy birthday, right? No. Is it? <laughs> what was it? Ouch. Yes. Sunny Get, side of the street. Sunny side up. Okay. Um. Do we do it? Yeah, yeah. Well, oh, what key? Uh, probably not that key, right? You tell me. No. No. Grab your coat, get your hat. Is that good? Leave you. That's too low. Okay. <laughs> uh, See how we rehearse these things and figure them all out ahead of time. Read your worries on the doors. <laughs> Step. No, that's still too low, I think. Really? Okay, well then we're back up where we started. Do you want to? Okay, how about? Yeah. Grab your coat, get your hat. We'll just try it. Okay. Leave y'all. Okay, okay, go. Okay, we've been if I obviously fall we, off that, we did a lot of rehearsing for this one. If I fall off, that, <laughs> of course I didn't know I was going to even do that song. If so. that key don't fit the door when I get to the door, it's just what it is. We'll just move it. We'll just do figure. Okay. Of course, for a second there, I think I went to the key of A. You, you, you went yeah. somewhere. I wasn't sure where you went. But, you know, I mean, it's, you know, nobody's human. Nobody's I, I came back. You did. And it was just what we'd call one of them uh, Himalayas. Uh, him, uh, Himalaya, Himalaya, Himalaya. Is that Hawaiian for you screwed yeah. up? Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, well, you know, at these prices, this is what you get. I'm telling you. Um, you know, anyways, sports. We're here to talk oh. about sports. We got Golden Gidget, the Wide World Sports. And I'm, I'm just going to rant for Did a second. Did y'all see the back of this shirt? Because, you know, the front's not that interesting. But can I can't see. Can Is it on the screen? Yes, it's on the screen. This is a vintage 50s Golden shirt, people. 
Oh my god. Gigi, you got some explaining to do. I know, I got lots of explaining. I explain. You got a shirt from a cocktail lounge. I explained to nothing. I don't want to hear about your huh? ladies hanging in a cocktail lounge with hell, a bowling ball. Hell, I went bowling today with my league from from. It, it's the cocktail social lounge. distance, right? Yeah. Well, you know, the, the lanes are more than six feet apart, so we were groovy, you know. Yeah, the bowling, bowling alleys are open in Monterey County now. Are they? You betcha. So that's where you went today when you were sitting in that chair over there? That's why I'm so exhausted because I was bowling all day. While you were sitting in that chair over there? That's where you went. my lady ball. Okay. Look. Oh my God. Oh, well, your lady bowls. I I'm know. Just, Believe I, me. We all know about lady bowls, don't we? We should have done sentimental journey because I'll tell you, this just holding this ball is such a sentimental journey. Well, you want to do it? <laughs> Okay. No, they don't want to hear it. Sure, They're they like, do, but. Uh, oh, they already heard her saying. They yeah, want to hear we're already play. hearing people complaining. Yeah, yeah, I, all I see is it's interrupting, it's interrupting. Folks, if it's not interrupting now, read this. This is not a Venmo. This is not a PayPal. This is saying go to YouTube yeah. and watch the show. This is Green Acres, people. We live out in the country and right. we're and happy you know, about it. And you know, Cindy for... is one of the people complaining. She's got to have as bad internet as us. It might be hers. Cindy. Cindy DeVincent, you know, down the street. Oh, Cindy. I wonder if hers is any better. We should do it at her house. Well, she says it's crappy. No, maybe it's us. Who knows? Anyways. We're crappy. And I'm tired We're of complaining too, about Cindy. this. Let's talk about sports for a second. Oh. This is what's pissing me off. And okay. Grumps doesn't Time get pissed go. off very regularly. Yeah, have fun. Okay. Love you. But here's the deal. Okay. When was the last time any sports happened? I mean, the they've done shit since we worked a gig, and I remember how long ago that was. And ain't sp and 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 I don't know, you know. I stay in touch with the news. I watch, I, you know, the networks and the and the radio stations, and I get periodicals. Those are magazines too, and I look at the local news every once in a while, and I go on, and they have sports still on the news channel. A couple of minutes, five minutes of sports. Now, what are they talking about? They're talking about when it's going to open or what some guy's making or some guy. I don't believe it. I just don't believe it. That time could have, should have, and should be used for music. It's about time that we said enough of the sports. I love sports and sports when they're happening, when there's something to talk about, when there's a game, when there's a trade, when there's something, yeah, give them back their time. I know people dig sports. I ain't got no problem with that. But right now, there ain't none. And you've got great musicians in every community who need to be celebrated. Now, I don't need it because I got Grumps TV and I'm all over the place. But there's great musicians in every town, in every place, and they need to be celebrated. And they're doing amazing things right here where they could just take this stuff and put it on the and, – and celebrate culture and people who actually spend money in that community. I mean, I am so beyond it. And so here's the other thing. i got to talk to my fellow musicians here. Are we tired of this or not? Are we cool with this? Yeah, watch a bunch of steroidal pituitary cases do great things physically and make all the money. I mean, hey, I'd like to hear them do what we do. Matter of fact, I've played with some of those guys, giving lessons. You know what I mean? Uh, yeah, I can dunk. A, I used to be able to dunk a basketball, but that was about it. Anyways, my point is, is we need to create music in such a way that people are excited about it. People treat it like sports. So I'm going to introduce something really new for the musician community. And you know, it's going to happen. Of course, Wynton Marsalis or Christian McBride will get famous for it. I believe we should have a scoreboard on jazz at jazz concerts. We need a scoreboard, perhaps a shot clock, a referee, maybe opposing teams. We need to sportify jazz music, maybe make it an Olympic sport. So, and I'm one of these guys, I mean, I, I have a responsibility to teach people. I know that the thought of that is just crazy. That Even I could be within 500 feet of a school is weird. But here's the deal. 
I have a thing with, I never ask my kids to do anything I wouldn't do myself. So here I am saying, let's sportify jazz. Let's, let's athleticize it. Let's make it so that people can bet on it. Because that's what they really want. So here it is. I am going to do the first ever attempt in the Olympic sport of fast bebop. I'm going to try and do the fastest Cherokee. And I'm not going to do the joke of it. I'm done. That's that's the old joke, right? I did a whole chorus there. No, I'm going to do a real chorus of Cherokee at a ridiculously stupid speed and see if I can make it to the end without falling off the bobsled or getting getting Gidge to throw a flag or or count me out for disqualification because I uh, played a 2-5 in the wrong key or something. Anyways, here we go. In the fast bebop category, Grumps, representing the United States of America with a little intro sort of indigenous from the audience there you go my first entrant in the bebop olympics cherokee at too fast a tempo but i made it you could hear the whole tune right no beats were dropped no changes were missed okay that was amazing that's what we gotta do we gotta somehow get the people to treat us with the same respect as the sports people yeah. And I know because I hang out with sports people. I have friends who are sports casters, who are sports or sportsers, and who are athletic supporters. I have lot. I know lots of athletic supporters. Sure. That didn't sound right. No. Well, I do know them nonetheless, and I've had them, and uh, and I've washed them Did or washed like myself of them. Is it like the lady? The lady balls are, oh, yeah, would go inside an athletic supporter, technically. Um, and, and we just lost two watches for that. Anyways, just here to say, does anybody have any ideas about how to sportify jazz music so that we can kind of take up some of that air that's being not used but abused by all these people. And these sportscasters need jobs. Hey, I don't want them to see them unemployed, but they can just as easily be reporting on music and musicians in the local community. And like maybe people would wake up and respect it and learn that it's really as cool as we know it already is. So how are we going to make that happen? It's up to you. And it's up to me. I say scoreboard, shot clock. That would really be good in a lot of bands I hear, believe me. And perhaps a referee. So uh, speaking, staying with our sports concept, I don't know if I've scared my dog already, but Ruby has something to say about that. Ruby, hey, Gidge, come bring Ruby and come in here because you're going to help with this. Ruby! Rumors! Your presence is requested. Come here, Ruby. Oh, what a good girl. You're going to be a star, Ruby star. Okay, Ruby was complaining the other day about how, how we invite all these people on our show to do stuff and, you know, sing along with the iPad, right? And and so she wants she she'll, she'll, she'll make herself she'll make herself present because it's dark out there and we didn't turn the lights on anyways but people can see us up there so it's okay hi folks uh I'll i look kids. better in the dark anyway. oh boy believe me she's good in the dark oh! she's 
she was I mean it that way. Oh my Anyways, God. so this is okay. Ruby complained about not being asked to be on the show. And so. Because she really missed the star. Take oh. me out to the ball game. Uh, Take me Ruby, out to the ball Buy me some peanuts and crackers, Jack. Come on, Ruby. Come on. talk to your agent wow uh it's been a big week here i'm still pissed off about the sports thing as you can tell as anyone should be right i mean here we are providing good and value to the world and they're still talking about something they may never happen you know i mean if there's a spike and stuff they're going to move these guys into like some part of disneyland and make them all like live for months by themselves and be on TV, and we'll have like little apps where what? we can fake. Are you serious? Yeah, we can fake applause <gasps> oh and shit. God. It's like, and and we're all as musicians are right here Aww. doing this. Can we turn some lights on? It's a strange, strange world we live in, Master um, Jack. That's all you know, I, can I mean, say. this is as you know. Usually, I'm wrestling Facebook, which it appears I am. And uh, is that helpful? No, I want that one and that one too. Uh, and so every day it's different. Appears as though, well, I don't know why there's so little light tonight, but, uh, oh, hello. And can we turn the other one on, too, to balance it out? This is great. Welcome to Fireside Theater. Uh, can you reach that? Ah, she did it. Okay, you're going to need to pull the shade down. Yeah, all right, we can see you. Hey, who said that? Anyways, I'm just saying that there's a bunch of musicians in the world. Are you there? Oh. oh, yeah. You just did the Facebook Live geezer thing. That's what all the Facebook geezers do. They get up and they try I knew and read. I accept that I knew what I I know you were doing it. I'm just pointing it out. You know. And, and there What's you for dinner? Okay, folks. You ready for this? Grumps is making steak for Gidge. Because she... Obviously. Because I'm tired. She's wasting away to nothing. I'm and she tired can barely, I was she can barely lift that bowling there. ball. I was bow this thing ain't for a lady ball. It's still kind of heavy. Them lady balls are the heaviest <laughs> balls of all. Believe me. <laughs> Ask true. any gentleman you know. That's true. That's really true. Anyways, uh, but we're we're you still got a long way to go in You're this show. You're making me a I'm, steak, though, huh? I'm making it. I'm, I, I'm I'm hopefully, for, hopefully, it's not a mistake. It's I'm just looking, a regular yeah. steak. I'm looking forward to it. Oh, I'm I am looking forward to making it. For you. And, and fries and, and sautéed spinach. Oh my gosh. With garlic and lemon. What we have for dessert last night? Oh man, Gidge oh, man. made. Yeah. Oh shoot, just, she just got apricots. 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 You say apricots, and I say apricots. You, you know the say... story about 
You know the story, right? About the woman who goes in for the... Yeah. Okay, should I tell it? No. I, gotta, I gotta tell it now. No. Okay, this woman goes no. in for... No. Her, she goes in for no. her Broadway audition. No. Oh, the Broadway audition. Yeah, oh, this and is she something. goes okay, in... I don't know this. And, okay, she sing, and she sings... <laughs> And she hands her music to the pianist to do her audition. And she says, you say potato, and I say potato. You say <laughs> tomato, and I say tomato. Potato, potato, tomato, tomato. Let's call the whole thing off. <laughs> and uh, the, the producer goes, okay, that's that's great. Thank you very much, Don't Liz. call us. And he looks down at the list and he says, thank you very much, Miss uh, Levine. And she says, it's Levine. <laughs> Of course. <laughs> That's cute. But go ahead, what about last night's apricot? Oh, the apricot crisp was like to die for. And it's I was pretty much season. dying because Grumps has had wow. a bad back lately. Yeah. That's why you don't see me doing like my usual break dancing. <laughs> um, and so. I play this like a violin, except. Okay, so let's. let's... So <laughs> you're playing My Romance. That's a nice chord. A weird key. I don't know what the hell it is, but I like it. You play my romance G flat. I just came out that way. <laughs> I'm just naturally musical. I guess you are, man. Wait, you should, well, you should hear her Bert and Farp. What? I said Bert and Farp. Who's that? Oh, that's our neighbor. Bert and Farp. Well, there was two gay guys. Door to neighbor <laughs> Okay, well, why don't we do? Why don't we do something? Bring it back to earth. And I'm still meaning about the sports. We got to figure out a way for people to bet on us, to trade us, yeah. and have a scoreboard I and a referee. A baseball card. Because we can turn ourselves into the new thing. Because people just don't get it without the competitiveness, oh, and we compete with each other all the time. Well, that's, with, with that's friendly too competition, for but now. don't fool yourself. Those no, those guys who compete with each other in sports—that's still friendly competition. They're all on a different team every year, and they're all like going out and hanging out, and they're buddies, that seem very, okay. sharing, and they're sharing steroids and all sorts of shit. Yeah, but they okay, are. so <laughs> anyways, you know what's the difference? Okay. Um, what key do we say? Oh, the new this? Clear the pipes. I, I don't Give like me. singing sitting down, I gotta say. This is couch. Ooh, it's like sitting in a well. More than you know. More than you know. And from my heart.
it's red. Close the tab. See that this is sport. And then open fire, open. Uh, yeah, okay, that works. <laughs> I'm doing tech. I'm doing tech support while playing a tune. This is great. I don't feel like I'm in a call center. Oh, 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 oh. Facebook Live. Okay, now wait a sec. Wait a sec. You see the three dots at the top? In the. I'll do it myself. Live video. And then you have to start a fun video again. And aren't you all proud of me how much the drugs are working that I'm not angry right now? glad the people on YouTube got to hear the whole thing and the, so sorry the people on Facebook. Basically, Mark Zuckerberg decided that some bullshit our president said was more important He than hates us. my singing. That's all But that's okay. that's okay. Cheers to you because you got hundreds of billions of dollars and we got each other. And I'm going to have a steak dinner later. Woohoo! With fries. Yeah. Anyways. Bam. This was a whole setup because we had an incredible encounter this week we went to the beach which is legal in our county oh it's great masks i wore a full body condom hazmat suit yeah everybody did and um and we ran across the bard oh of, yeah the bard of this carmel is, this is amazing carmel bay he calls himself the bard of carmel I bay this is the bard of the universe yes but, this man right. is such a special talent and I'm and so DVD. happy to introduce you to him. I, the idea I had was I was going to play along with him, like I do, like I ruin everybody's <laughs> video that I play. But the, it was just, it's so beautiful that I am going to just let you enjoy this the way it should be done. And, uh, and who is this? This is a man named Talen Thomas, spelled T A E L E N. Thomas, the Bard of Carmel Bay. And here you go. Vulture by Robinson Jeffers. I had walked since dawn and lay down to rest on a bare hillside above the ocean. I saw through half-shut eyelids a vulture wheeling high up in heaven. 
And presently it passed again, but lower and nearer, its orbit narrowing. I understood then that I was under inspection. I lay dead still and heard the flight feathers whistle above me and make their circle and come nearer. I could see the naked red head between the great wings bare, downward, staring. I said, my dear bird, we are wasting time here. These old bones will still work. They are not for you. But how beautiful he looked gliding down on those great sails. How beautiful he looked peering away in the sea light over the precipice. I tell you solemnly that I was sorry to have disappointed him. To be eaten by that beak and become part of him. To share those wings and those eyes. What a sublime end of one's body. Mm -hmm. What an ensquiment. What a life after death. Wow. I love that so this much. This is a beautiful poem. And I you, love now that you know why so I didn't much. play anything. Yeah. Uh, but now I'm going to play something. Robinson Jeffers, Taylor Thomas, can't go wrong. Cinema Paradiso, good thing oh. to put after that. Yeah, yeah, baby. Wow, that was, you see, Grumps can get deep, and it can get cold, and it can get deep and cold, but we still got a scoreboard, and you can bet on us. Okay, again, reminder to everybody, to see the whole show, and to see all the past shows, just go to our YouTube channel, it's Bruce Foreman Grumps, or just Bruce Foreman will probably get you there, and you will see all of our shows without all these nasty Mark Zuckerberg challenges. And I'm sure he's a nice guy. I'll bet even his mother tolerates him, you know? Um. Oh, man. Now let's go down memory lane. This is really important to me. Let me tell you a story. A couple of great friends of mine are bass players. And I know that's not a really common sentence. <laughs> uh, it really isn't. When you think about it, it's not a very common sentence. Nonetheless, uh, there is a young man who I, who I fortunately got to know. He was in a He's a group of talented brothers. Uh, I knew his oldest brother, who's a wonderful trumpet player, and I knew I actually gave lessons to his the middle brother, who's a great guitar player, and um, I hung out with all three of these kids. I actually played the Monterey Jazz Festival with them, uh, and and later this gentleman who I'm talking about he joined the monterey all-star band uh with with us at that point it was uh, al plank and then t carson and on piano and vince laiano on drums and i do believe that his first gig with a real band was a band a trio i had 
official gig, you know. Uh, but it was one of them, if not the one. Um, was with the trio I had with Donald Bailey on drums, who I've talked about, I'm sure, a ton. And if I will talk about more because Donald Bailey deserves to be discussed, in my opinion, in the same conversation of a Thelonious Monk. He, while he didn't compose all those tunes, his, his way of playing was original. His way of looking at the music was original. His way of nurturing people around him was original. He played numerous instruments. Um, he was always challenging the world. It was a major impact on me. And this gentleman was in that band and uh, I got to play with him a bunch and we be, we've been friends for years. We occasionally run into each other while he's, and we always knew that this guy was going to be the, the, the bass guy in the world. And uh, then we did, he didn't surprise us. He plays with uh, Pat Martin and uh, Pat, Pat Matheny and John Schofield, but most, most of his gigs right now are with Brad Meldo, or at least he's in that trio, as well as his own group. This is Larry Grenadier. And what really pisses me off is he looks the same age as he did when I first started playing with him. I mean, I think if there's a Faustian thing happening here, this is the guy. Anyways, I asked him to send me something, and he knows that I'm grumps now, and he's I think he feels pretty bad about it. So this is what he sent. Hey, Grumps. Hope this changes your mood a little bit. One, two, three, four. <laughs> Shout chorus. Tell you a story that 
Only a few people know about Larry, this little cockroach. Anyway, we were in Japan, in, in some town outside of Tokyo, I think, and uh, it's the Monterey Jazz Festival All-Stars. And we were in this like amazing Japanese style hotel, little teeny rooms and things. And uh, they really treated us great. Anyways, uh, it was right before the end of the tour. And it was one of those ones where you had to have your hotel, your bags outside of your room by like one o'clock in the morning. And then, you know, because they would, the, the, the baggage guys would come get them and then you, whatever. And so Larry and I were kind of getting rambunctious. We were drinking a lot and we were having a good time. He was about uh, probably 20 and I was probably about 13, you know, in my, at least in maturity level. And um, <laughs> we created a game, seeking of sports, uh, a baseball game. Because they had these wonderful little cheese puffs in a bag that they gave us. And they're also in the um, in the closet. There was a shoehorn that came, came on like a long bamboo holder. So you didn't have to bend over to use it. You know, you, you've probably seen those. It's like a big, long, looks like a golf club, except for it's got a shoehorn at the end of it. Anyway, so we had that. So we developed a baseball game where you pitch the cheese puff. And if you hit it, and if it gets to, like, one place, it's a single. If you get to another place, it's a double. If it gets to another place, it's a triple. And if you pulverize it, it's a home run. And if you miss it, you're out. And so we developed a baseball game. We had kind of a World Series in the room. But the thing is, is we've kind of gotten down to where we stripped down to our necessities because basically we had our clothes for the next day and everything else was packed in our suitcases that had already been taken off to the luggage logistic humans. So we were kind of dressed in skivvies playing this baseball game and um, cleaning out the hotel minibar in my room. And so we, uh, we had this game and man, we were pulverizing puffs and, you know, and knocking them all against windows and stuff. And, it was a real exciting game. I don't even remember who won, but um, we realized that we'd pretty much trashed my room and we thought it wrong for these wonderful people who sponsored us in this great town and to this wonderful, <laughs> this wonderful, um, yeah, you know how it is. You know, I mean, I don't want to be that rock guy who just trashes. I wasn't pissed off at all. We just came up with a good game because sports and jazz, this is our theme. So this is exactly why this was all happening. And so I decided, I said, Larry, this is a, this is a, old, this is like a podunk town. It's not like, it's not like the cities. I'll be able to find the vacuum or the, the maid's closet and I'll get some brooms or, or a vacuum. And we'll clean this up at least pretty good so that we don't really disgrace the owner of the hotel and the people who hired us and get a reputation for being that kind of asshole who trashes a hotel room. So I went out on reconnaissance. The whole idea was Larry would wait. I'd bring back some utensils. We'd clean up. And um, I went out in the hallway in my skivvies and went looking for the um, maid's closet. And I did, And except for as I left the room, I heard this click on my door. And I was now locked out of my room wearing practically nothing. Ooh. But I figured he was just being cool, you know, like, I mean, and I went to get the... Uh, and I found the maid's closet. I had to kind of break in, but it wasn't a big break in. It was pretty flimsy. And I broke in and I got a big old vacuum and I came, I was like, hey, I have like, we're halfway there now. And I got back to my room and I start banging on the door and he won't let me in. Now I'm standing there with nothing but underwear and a big old vacuum. And the tour manager walked by. And he looked at me, and all he did was this. 
And he just kept walking, went into his room and click. And I'm like screaming at Larry, if you don't let me in, I'm going to kill you. And eventually you're going to have to come out of this room and you know I can do it. And eventually he let me in and it was a pretty funny thing and we laughed about it and I made him do most of the cleaning but we did we cleaned up the room fairly well I think and um, I made him bring the vacuum back when he left the room however I don't know, it's sports and jazz right we I mean we don't know who won the game but does it really matter when life that's the really thing I mean think about it all the great games I've saw I'm at think about the Giants having won the World Series and really when I think back to games that I got to hang out with with Pammy Gidget I mean and I got to hang out with my family or my brothers when I was growing up I don't even remember who won those games it was all just being there and that's what music is about so with that I think I'm going to end this show and I'm just going to take you down this is the sequiturs are are unbelievable because there's another brother I have another bass player more of a contemporary of mine who uh, we played together when we were both coming out of high school and we had bands together and we loved each other he got sort of um, kind of sidetracked into classical music somehow I mean I don't know how that happened I mean that shit's much better than it sounds I guess but um, I like it. Okay, now this is it, so I'm gonna stop it. Stop oh, it. Oh, is it. Okay, hold is on. Stop. Going over no, I'm gonna stop you and bring you back up. Okay, this is my friend Ken Miller. We've been friends for God since we were in our teenage years. We played in a million bands together. Like I say, he went to the dark side, classical music, plays in the orchestra, plays in the symphony. His wife's an amazing flute player who also plays in the opera and the ballet and the symphony. And they're just basically top, well, you'll hear it, but they decided to, to give me a, um, a gift. And I want to share this with you as we say goodnight, and I'm going to make Gidget a steak dinner for dealing with 23 of these episodes. Again, a reminder, without the freezes and without the farts and starts and parps and parps and burps and burps, Go to YouTube, go to the Bruce Foreman channel. Please subscribe. It supposedly helps me a lot. Um, I also have a podcast called Guitar Wank with Scott Henderson and Troy McCubbin. Oops, it's upside down. Okay, Guitar Wank. And um, we have a lot of guests and we talk about music. Come on, let's all be a community here. I haven't asked for money once yet, so <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I have I have let you know that my CDs are five for twenty five, including shipping, and my novel is available online as an ebook or from me. But anyways, Ken and Julie, this is what this is really what friends are about. Check this out. Hello from San Francisco, from Ken and Julie. San Francisco, which I am, they don't have lawns. All we got is driveways. So anyways, everybody be good to each other. Remember, we need sports. And, no, we need jazz. We need music. That's what we need. <laughs> and find it and, you know, bet on it. Because that's the only way you'll give a shit about it. Ooh. Love you.